Uh, today we're going to work on the Posh Bunny. So Kind of Wonderful came out with this beautiful, cute little bunny just in time for Easter and I thought it would be really fun to make a video so that all of you could see how I use the mini ruler and how easy it is to sew curves. And I know some of you have taken my classes with the Santa and other classes, so this will just be a new lesson, another lesson for you to follow along with. So what you need is to go to their website and download the pattern. It's $12 PDF, you can print it out, then you can write on it. Okay, and before you actually work on the quilt with me, if you, um, you need to cut all the fabric in the rectangles on the second page, or I guess it's called page one of the pattern. It's the general cutting, okay? And they've given you a space to write in your fabric choices. I use pencil. So the supplies you need, pattern, mini QRC ruler, permanent Sharpie marker to mark on your ruler, the marks come off, rubbing alcohol, and a pencil to write on your pattern. And this way, when you make it again and again, because you'll probably want to, um, you can erase and rewrite in your new colors and new information and you have the same pattern. Okay, so I have done this cutting already and these are my fabric choices. They are over here. So I've chosen white for the bunny. I have this green for the background because I had enough of it. This is the pink for the accent. I found this really cute fabric for the bow tie and I fussy cut a little knot piece for the bow tie, giving him bright blue eyes. And then I'm going to try and make the egg a different color than the accent fabric on the bunny. So, And then I might even try making some extra eggs later on and if I do I will let you know. So today we're going to get started and we're, I'm going to read through the directions and do each piece step by step with you. Alright, step one, cutting with the mini ruler. This is all the ones we've had for our other lessons, so you should be all set, you should all have it. Working with the four and a half by seven and a half fabrics, three from the bunny, okay, so I have my three from the bunny, and two from the accent. I am going to cut the fabrics. All right, it says align the fabrics under the V in the corner. All right, so let's start with the two accents. I'm stacking them up together. You can decide whether you want to do that or not. I like to, I'm super organized. I like to put them on a line on my mat. Here is the dotted line on the ruler. That's what we're putting on the corner. So we're putting that right down on the corner. All right, I'm going to lay it there. It is right on the corner, right there. Mm -hmm. All right. And now I'm going to take my rotary cutter and I'm going to drop it in there and I'm cutting right along the curve. And I got one piece. Now they want you to cut here like this and I'm not good at cutting backwards and I don't think anybody should, so I'm going to rotate my piece. I'm going to put that dashed line right on there again, okay? And I'm going to put it right down, and I'm going to start in that one slit and come right around. And I have my other two pieces. Now I have four beautiful curves, okay? They called it the V line in the pattern. And you'll notice there's a dashed line and a dotted line, but the dotted line does not make a V, so be careful about that. You want to the V line. Now I'm stacking all three of these together because I've been cutting for a while. There's no shame in cutting them one at a time. I also have more white if it messes up. So I'm putting the, da the dashed line, the V, on there just like we did with the accent ones. Going in and cutting. There's my three bunny ones. I'm turning it around, making sure my corners nicely lined up. Putting the V in the corner. 
and cutting my curve. This is waste. That's my new Eleanor Burns look. Okay, putting those aside, and we're on to step two of the directions. That was all step one. That wasn't too hard, was it? Okay, step two. Stack a few of the eight five and three quarter by five and three quarter background triangles. So when you cut under the general instructions, you cut four squares, five and three quarters, and now we're going to, and then you cut it once on the diagonal, it gave you eight triangles. That's, these are the triangles that we are working with. These are my background triangles. All right, so I'm only going to cut, since we have eight, I'll do two groups of two, just to start with. All right, I'm lining them up so that the, the straight line is right there. And now it's telling you to position the ruler on the triangle as shown, align the 90 degree corner with the 5 inch edge. So here's our 90 degree corner. Okay, with right here. That's the 90 degree corner. And we're putting it on the 5 inch edge right here. Alright. And I'm using a solid line along the base. You can pick any line you want. This, this is a dashed line. Any line that goes perpendicular to this line, a nice straight line, okay? And it says position the 5 inch and trim the corners, okay? So if I drop it down, we can cut both of them, the 5 and the 5, okay? That's what it says in the directions, and if I actually read them clearly to you, you would get it. So we can cut them both off at the same time. So I'm cutting this off, and I'm cutting this corner off. And now I'm going to do them all so that we're doing just one step at a time. Okay, we're now done with step two of the cutting instructions. All right, slide that off. Oh, no we're not. We have to cut out the curve. We have to cut the curve. We just did one part of step two. We need curved pieces. Getting ahead of myself. Looking, always looking ahead. So, I have these stacked right here. And I'm going to, it says, to now position the ruler with the corners aligned with the dashed line, dashed line edge. Okay. Alright. So there's, here's the dashed line edge, and there's a dashed line edge, and they are both touching. I don't know how well you can see that. I'll point it out with my right here dashed line, right here dashed line. We're going to start, and now we're going to cut right in that curve, and we're going to do this to all the pieces. Okay, we don't need this piece. We need to hang on to these pieces. Okay, we now have, now we've completed step two, and it's time to collect the fabrics for step three. I will do that and lay them right down here in front. And it tells us we need three, three and a half by five inch pieces of bunny fabric, so that would be my white fabric. So I'm thinking this might be three and a half by... Five. Beautiful. Three and a half by five. And I need how many of the eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There they are. They're my eight bunny ones. One accent bunny. One accent bunny. Two bow ties. Here are my two bow ties. And 13 backgrounds. Uh, I guess. It's, it's going to be one with a lot of them. 1, 2, 11, 12, 13. 
Okay. So I have all the pieces that I need. Um, now it's telling you lay out as shown in sample three. So I will lay it out, then you'll see what sample three looks like. It's telling me of the bunny fabric, I need four right side down and four right side up. So the good news with my bunny fabric, it's a solid. It's the same right side to wrong side. So I'm just going to lay them in a pile of four, two piles of four because it says four right side up and four right side down. So I'm just neatening my pile here and I will just put them a little off skew so that you can see that I've made my two piles of four. Okay, I have my two piles of four. They're my white ones. Then it's telling me of my bunny accent, it needs to be right side down. Again, solid fabric, but it would be right side down. Now it's telling me of my background fabric, seven right side down and six right side up. But this is again is a solid fabric, so I'm just going to leave it as a pile here because it doesn't matter. And it's telling me with the bow tie fabric, it looks like with the bow tie fabric, it's one right side up and one right side down. So we're going to put them right sides together. This is good, so you can actually see right side up, right side down. And it will be a surprise which way, because I didn't really study. Draco. So there we go. That's Now we're organized to do the cutting. Now it's telling me to measure and mark a half inch and one inch as shown. So they're telling me to mark a half inch. I will do it right on this one so that you can see. Here's my pencil. And I think you'll be able to see the lines. If not, I'll get something darker. So it's measuring a half inch down from the top. So my mat has half half inch marks. You can use a ruler or you can use a mat if you have the half inch marks. I do. So I'm just putting a mark half inch down and then it's telling me to come in one inch from this corner making it nice and dark. I hope you can see it. There's one inch down one inch in this direction and a half inch down this direction. Now it says position the ruler over the marks and cut. All right. So we're going to put this over the ruler, over the marks, and you just have to slide it around till you can see. I can see a mark in here, and I can see the mark in there. And I'm going to cut out my piece of fabric. Okay. So now I have two pieces here, and I have two pieces here. So, for the bow tie, it look this is they're showing this is actually I'll show you what it looks like in the pattern. There's this is like the picture in the pattern right here. Okay, so we're gonna hang on to all the pieces, and I'm just gonna keep them together, stack them up. Okay. So for right now, I'm stacking them together. That's the bow tie fabric, cut. I'm gonna put it with my other cut pieces and I'm going to cut all the rest of them and then we'll move on to the next step. But they're all done the same way. And I believe that by the picture here, this is, means you keep them all because they're showing that you keep all of the bunny ones. You keep both the accents, but you only keep this piece right here of the background ones, okay? So I will cut them and I will come back and we will move on to the next step. All right, so now we've completed the first three steps. We're on to step four in the pattern. This time we're working with two and a half by four and a half pieces. We need four bunny pieces. We need seven bunny accents. I've actually put them in two piles here. We need the bunny nose right here and we need um, Given that the accent pieces were also the egg pieces, and I'm cutting my egg pieces out of this fabric, but I'm cutting these accent pieces too, just for backup. So, because I think all of them could be here, but without double checking the pattern to make sure I need these. But if you make it just as the pattern goes, your cutting supplies, your cutting pieces would look just like this. 
but I'm adding a fun looking egg and so I'm adding these pieces and as we go along I'll show you where I take these pieces out and put these pieces in. It tells us again here, um, lay them out as shown. So the bunnies, half of them pieces are half right side up and half right side down. I have them all set that way. The accent, right side up, right side down here. And then these are the same because these are the same as the accent. There, I have them in pairs, right sides together. Okay. So now we've got that done, and now it's time to cut the sample. And it says to cut it, um, position the curve, and cut out opposite diagonal points as shown. So we're cut. We're putting. We're taking our ruler. And we're putting one part of the curve. I'm going to move these pieces out of the way so that we can just start cutting. Let's start with the nose. It's two pieces, right sides together. We are putting the curve on this point and this point, opposite points, and we're making the curve. So we're taking the pieces and I'm futzing it around till I see the corner in this part of this slot and I see the corner in the slot down here. I put my blade in and I cut around and I have the piece. These pieces are discarded. So I'm going to do that with all my pieces now. We did it. Alright, we've done the first four steps. We're on page three now of the pattern and we're going to begin to lay out our pieces to sew the curved pieces. Okay, so now um, we're picking up at piecing the curves. So the first curves we're going to piece are these. We have five of the background and five of the bunny and it's three background and three bunny accents. And I'm going to show you, I'm going to demonstrate how to sew the curve and then you're going to and I'm going to just continue to sew all the rest. Okay. Now it tells you in the directions that you need to put this piece, first of all we're going to, let me just show you. The, the, I say the belly goes on top. So we're going to start by placing this piece roughly a half an inch down from the start. They give you a beautiful picture right here. Okay, So it's easier for me just to start stitching at the beginning rather than dropping my um, rather than dropping my fabric down on top. So I'm holding them together. I have my quarter inch foot on and I'm stitching a quarter inch away from the edge of my little tail there. And I'm just stitching straight down till I, till I catch the fabric. I've just caught that piece on top. Then I'm lifting this one up and I'm pushing with my finger on the bottom piece. So I'm always, if you notice, I'm not pulling, I'm just lifting. I'm just guiding the bottom piece underneath. And if I get scared, I can just stop. And then I can go again. It's not a problem to start and stop. What you don't want to do is pull the piece, but each time as we've guided along, I'm sewing a straight line each time. Now it gets a little funny here as you get close to the end, so I tend to stop a bunch because I want it to go. If you want, you can um, I just sort of lift it out here on the edge and I'm going I'm going slower and I bring it right to the end. Let me show you. I have another little tail I can use here to um, sew it through. Let me just show you what this one looks like because then you'll be on your own. You'll be sewing them and you'll be flying along. So look how beautiful this curve looks. And we didn't stress about it. We didn't have to pin 8 million times. This is how nice this curve looks all the way along. So we're going to sew them all and then I'm going to show you how to press them after we've sewn them all. All right? Enjoy! So now we're going to talk about how to sew these pieces um, in, in step 8, but step 7 is just laying out the pieces like this, okay? Organizing all of them, nose bunny, nose bunny, okay? And um, I will have a shot of them all laid out, but right now this is just how to sew these pieces. Okay, we're going to talk about seeing another curve being sewn. And they've def they've labeled them. So this one right here facing this way with this bunny, I actually have the pictures backwards from their pictures, which would make it easier. This is E and this is D. And then they 
consider this DM and this is EM. So the first picture is working with the D and the E pieces, okay? So what we're going to do is take the D and the E pictures, of course now I've had it all worked out. We, we're going to start with the um, curve in the underhand and the belly, the cur the belly curve. It's concave and convex, but you know, when I went to school and I was a math major and geology major and I had to deal with it all the time, I always go, which is concave, which is convex? But I'm putting it down. This time we're starting only a quarter of an inch down. So just a short way down. We all know what a quarter inch is because we're using a quarter inch seam. So we're going to stitch right up till we just bite the fabric. Now I can lift this piece up and this one, like before, gets pushed underneath. It's the same steepness of curve, but we just have a little different bit to hold on. So I'm just pushing it underneath. And remember, if you get scared, you can stop and readjust your fabric and make sure that you're staying with the seam. Don't pull. I'm just letting it slide underneath my fingers. It's just going nice and slow, sliding underneath my fingers, keeping it right at the edge of my quarter inch foot. And, it, and you can see how I have a nice straight line that I'm sewing on and I come all the way off. Okay, now this one, this is the other one. We're, we're putting the belly on top and we're starting on this one. This one now, because it's touching on the short side, comes down the half an inch. Okay, so that's double what we went down before. Um, we're going to put that right underneath the same way. I'm stitching right down to it till I just catch it. And I'm lifting the top one. The sewing's the same for all of them. And I'm just pushing it underneath so that you can see I'm always sewing a straight line, even though it's a curve. Go figure. It's so amazing how that works. It's just gently being pushed underneath. And when it gets to the end, it's a little tricky. Don't fret, you'll get it. And we get down to the end. Now I'm going to pull, stitch this through so you can see what they look like. And we'll go on. You can just replay this over and over again until you get it. Okay, look at how nice that comes out. Oh my gosh, there's one say. There's the other. This is going to be my little bunny nose. Kind of cute. So now we've made our blocks and curved blocks. There are only two types of blocks. There's this one right here, the, this bigger curve, and then this one, which is like probably like a quarter of that one. But anyway, you have these two. They may face different directions, they may look different, but they're exactly these two. So I'm going to show you how to iron them. You need to iron them from both sides. In the directions, this one tells you to push the seam allowance toward, they call them E or D or they have a letter name. I'm not looking at it right now so I can't tell you, but you're pushing it towards this piece versus the edge piece. And then this one, they don't give you a direction as far as I remember in the directions. You can push it either way. So I've been pushing it towards the background. So I'm going to show you how easy it is to switch it if you make a mistake or if in piecing it you decide you want your curved piece when you're putting your whole quilt together to go the other way. You can just take it back and re-iron it. Okay, so we're going to start with this one. I like to start on the back side. You can see it's straight up, so I could push it this way or I could push it this way. So I'm going to push it the opposite way they um, say to, to start with or I'm choosing to, to start with, um, just so I can show you how to flip it. Alright, so I'm pushing it down this way. It's getting it started. Then I come to the front side, and I'm pressing it on the front side. And look how perfect that is. That's a wrinkle. That's a crease from the fabric. That is not from the sewing, <laughs> just so you know. This is the nice smooth curve that you got. Nice flat seam. Okay, so now you go, oh no, I really meant it to go the other way. Not a big deal. You can just come, I just finger push it up the other way, I'm bringing the iron back in, and I'm gently touching it back the other way just to get it going. Okay, flipping it over, and I because we had it over, I'm just giving it a little help there with my fingers underneath. And now I'm a steam girl, that's totally up to you. Now that it's stable, I'm just putting a little steam down. Look at that. 
It's an amazing curved piece. We did it with no pins. Can you believe that? No pins. We sewed the seam, just lifting it up and curving it. We will need to trim this down, which I'll show you after I iron this one. Now this one wants it to go towards the white. So I'm just holding this, pushing that gently towards the white, bringing it over to the other side, gently holding it down. I'm not like pushing hard on the iron. And now I'm going to just give it a little steam because it's flat underneath there. And look at that one. Isn't that beautiful? Now, see all this wonkiness out here? Presto, change out, it's going to go away. Okay, so now let's go over back to my cutting mat and we will cut out the pieces so you can see how to use the ruler to trim them down. We're now ready to square up the two, the different shapes, okay? I have this one, I have one of each one of them to demonstrate. So, this one right here is the instructions for how to square it up are in step nine of your pattern. And it tells you to make sure that the background fabric, or whatever this piece is here, the outer edge of the curve, is in the upper right hand corner. This corner is in the upper right hand corner. Okay? So we're going to start there. It says square up shape the AB shapes to four inch squares. We now need to use our ruler and we're going to make it into a four inch square, but we need the curve in the right spot. So it's telling us, it's going to tell us where to put the ruler. Okay? And it's telling us to leave an eighth of an inch from the curved seam to the outer edge, trim the side and top of the ruler. So it's so what we're going to do is, this, I actually put a dot which you can't see, so I'll do it again, um, on my ruler. This sol there's a dashed line around the edge of your ruler and a solid line around the edge of the ruler. The dashed line is a quarter inch away and the solid line is an eighth inch away. So on the number four inch line, where the number four is, I'm putting a circle with, I use a blue sharpie and I, I use blue. I wish I had like bright red or something so you could see it. But I put a dot right there and then I'm coming over here to the four inch, the number four, and on the same solid line where it intersects, the two lines intersect, I'm putting another circle right there on my ruler. So I know exactly where I need to look when I'm looking down to line this up. So I'm putting that dot that I made, or the one inch mark, on the four there, and I'm putting it on the curve. And it pretty much just hits the edge of this block right here. So it's the dots, right? One dot's there, one dot's there, it's on the curve. So now I have the eighth of an inch away that they're asking for. So take my rotary cutter, cut up. When I hit a cur uh, intersection like this, I actually start forward a little bit, come back, and then cut it off. Oh, there we go. Eleanor Burns threw it up, except it's not the floor. So now I'm rotating it so that this is now in the bottom left corner, and I'm just putting it, it's just like using a square ruler, I'm putting the four and the four in the corner. So I'm following down the four and the four. And now I know I will have a four inch square. There we go. Now if you've sewn all your pieces, you can go back and square up all your shapes. All your pieces like that. I have all mine done now. So, now we have these two shapes. These are a little trickier to think about. All right. So, you can see on the picture here, now we're on step 10, they've given you a nice picture like this in their instructions. And so we're going to tip our piece so it looks just like it. You can see how I can't make that this one look like that picture, but this one I can make look like the picture. So I know I'm going to use these instructions right here. And they're telling you to put the cross symbol. So where the, these two um, dashed lines intersect, it makes a cross. All right? So I can clearly see that, which is nice. So I'm putting that, they want the cross symbol on the line, and then they want the two inch line to touch the, kiss the curve there. So I'm rotating it so the two inch line's kissing the curve and the plus symbol is on the curve. 
And now I'm going to cut up and across. Okay. So now I'm going to rotate it, and it's telling me to square it up to two and a quarter by four. So I'm doing this, I'm putting the four inch line on this edge right here, and the two and a quarter line along the base of the white. I'm cutting up and across. Okay, now this one matches the picture here. So all the ones that are this shape match this picture. And we're doing the exact same thing that we did before. We're putting the cross up on the curve and we're putting a line on the edge of the curve, following a line on the edge of the curve and the cross right up there. All right. And it's again the same size, the two and a quarter by four. So now this time I have to rotate it so that the trim, two trim sides are here. We put that on the, oh wait, nope. We have to do this so that we have four, two and a quarter by four. So I'm putting the two and a quarter down here. Okay. And I'm putting the edge right here. This time I'm just cutting this off here. I must not have trimmed. And I can flip it around. I did this on the first one that I did too. So, and I trimmed it off here. Four. So now these are, you can see these are both the same size. So all these pieces are the same size. Okay, we're now ready to put our bunny together. Once we have all our curved pieces sewn and trimmed, we're ready to go. Okay, so now we're ready to make our bunny. I've laid out the first set of pieces that they've asked us to sew together in the pattern. So I'm just going to sew it together and I'm assuming we all know how to sew a straight seam. And we're gonna just rock and roll. So here we go. Oh, I should tell you, I have my stitch length set at 2.0 and on my machine, I have it going with a uh, needle down, so it stops every time with needle down so that I can chain piece my pieces together. So, so that I can stitch the next part, I need to go press. I'll be right back. Okay, now we have these fit right in here, but we have one more seam. You'll see how that'll shorten it up and make it fit nicely. We're going to just add this one right on. And it's important to get these on the correct side because they will both fit. One goes on one side, one goes on the other. And we'll just sew these on, attach them together. There it is, up on my design wall it goes. Okay, the next piece, the next set of directions tell us to make the nose and the tail pieces. So, these are the tail, and this is our nose. Kind of looks like a weird nose, but, so first of all, we have to trim these down. So what we're gonna do is take this piece, we're gonna do it one at a time, and I need my six and a half inch ruler. There, perfect, thank you. So, it's actually, we're making a two and a quarter inch squares out of this piece. So I'm just trimming that off. And this one has to come from this side. Two and a quarter. And, there's our nose, kind of cute little nose. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing for the tail. So our tail and our nose are alike, except that different color fabrics. All right, there we go. Those are scraps. All right, now we're gonna sew them together. Now here we go, this is interesting because if, when I put these together, 
I'm going to show you this. The seams allowances are going the same direction. If I want them to nest, I'm going to I need to flip this. So what I'm going to do is take one of each of them and flip it the other way. Okie dokie. Now I'm going to show you how this will now nestle when I put them together. So when I put these two together, these seams are going to lock together just like just like when you are putting together a nine patch or a four patch quilt block these will lock up together and we should have a perfect match right there. Okay, hopefully it works the same for this one. Slide it right in there. A nice little perfect notch. Okay, look at that. These pieces match perfectly there. They probably would if you hadn't flipped them also. More pinning. But at least I felt secure with flipping them and it. They flipped so easily. It was not hard to do. Okay, so now I have a tail and a nose. We're on to the next step. We're going to start with our nose and attach a piece to the nose. Alright, so now we're going to put together our nose piece. And we're going to attach so these pieces together to make the next section. Oh my goodness, it actually looks so cute. There we go. Okay, up on my design while it goes. Alright. Now we're going to make the tail piece go together. We're going to add this piece and we need a piece of background and I bet this is what we want. Yep. Okay, this piece goes right here like this. Now you guys could be smart and label all your pieces, and um, I did not, so I'm having to, sometimes they look close in size to another piece, so I'm having to measure to make sure I'm using the right one, and then you know for sure because it fits, but I have to check just to make sure. Okay, there we go. Tail piece. Now we're ready to lay out our pieces on the design wall. So give me a moment and you will see these bunny pieces together on the design wall and then we'll stitch it all together. All the rabbit head is on my design wall and now I'm going to sew it all together. We'll peek at it again. We're now ready for the reveal. All right, we have a bunny face. It's on. Okay everybody, now we're gonna build the bunny's bow tie. And I'm just laid the pieces out how they go and I'm gonna sew them together step by step, starting with this. Okay, and here's my bow tie. All set and ready to go. All right, it's going up on my design wall. Next, we're turning our little bunny belly into a bunny egg, an Easter egg. So we're gonna set the pieces up here for that. You may not be able to see them all. They may not all fit on the screen, but we will do the best we can and uh, line it up so that you can see. Okay, what? And now we're going to put our pieces in here. Good that way. I have my little consultant hiding in the background. Not hiding. No, she's behind this. Behind the screen is like the Wizard of Oz, you know. Like, who is that behind the screen? Okay, there we go. I'm gonna sew it together, and in magic, when you come back, it's all together. Okay. Okay. Here is our Easter egg, and the body of the bunny all done. Going up on the design wall, we'll see what's next. First thing we're going to do is attach the bunny tail to this long strip. Next, 
is putting all these strips together. This is our little bunny base. This is the last bunch of pieces. And then we're going to put the major chunks together, the belly, the bow tie, the head, and attach the tail. All right? So I'm going to sew these on. Next time you see me, this will be going up on the design wall. Okay, now the bunny feet are done. I'm going to sew the whole bunny together. So next time you see me, we will have a bunny, an Easter bunny. All right, here we go. Okay. Okay, all this bunny needs is a good pressing, and then you'll get to see her. Okie dokie, there it is.